I want to read together, it's really just two verses. I'm going to read first of all from Psalm uh, 100, and, I beg your pardon, Psalm 46, not 146. Psalm 46, just as part of a little verse that we'll know so well in that psalm. You'll probably know the psalm anyhow, it begins, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. But it's verse 10 down towards the end of the psalm. And it's really just that little thought. It says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Be still and know that I am God. And I want to couple that for just a few moments this morning, keeping an eye on the clock and we'll not try to prolong things. But I want to couple that with part of a verse that we find in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 8. And it's verse 14. And it's just really the first phrase, the first question that we find in that verse. Verse 14, Jeremiah 8, it says, Why do we sit still? Assemble yourselves and let us enter into the defense cities and let us be silent there. For the Lord our God hath put us to silence and given us water of gold to drink because we have sinned against the Lord. Why do we sit still? And so we have those two thoughts that lie before us this morning. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 11, Solomon said that God had made everything beautiful in his time. Friends, there are times that it's just so beautiful, isn't it? Just to sit still. Be still and know that I am God. Those times in our experience, whenever we perhaps have spent a time in prayer, maybe a time in, in personal worship, whatever, sometimes even collectively together, or maybe those times whenever we look to the Lord and we find ourselves, perhaps in whatever situation it is, and we're just before the Lord in his presence. And we don't know how to pray. Perhaps we don't know what we need to be saying in that situation. Times whenever, as it were, speech has gone and our, our, our minds are just filled with whatever. But we need God in that situation. And it's in times like that that I've mentioned, those various times, that it's just good to be still and know that he is God. There is nothing more beautiful, nothing more blessed than to sit in the presence of the Lord in stillness and sense and to feel his presence and to know his touch upon our lives, resting, so to speak, in our God, resting in his full provision, the provision of the cross, and praise God, the provision of his great love. Perhaps today, someone here Maybe someone outside in their car or someone else who's tuned into this today or maybe at some stage throughout this week. I, I don't know. But perhaps today someone needs to be reminded to sit still. You know, I believe if there's anything that these past weeks and months have taught us, and I'm sure you will agree with me, it's the importance of certain things and the unimportance of other things. Would you agree with that today? You see, we have come through those weeks and those months of, of lockdown, and we've had time on our hands. For a number of weeks, if you were furloughed from work, you had all of the time in the world to do the things around the house, that, that right, that needed to be done. I bet you all the painting's done, and all the stuff's tidied up, and everything's sorted out. Our house is still far from that. Get she's shaking her head. That doesn't happen at our house. But, but anyhow. But you know, we've had time on our hands. Time on our hands. You see, care and worry can distract us. And whenever the Lord placed time in our hands once again, from the busyness of life, whenever we could do nothing else except be in lockdown, he didn't just do that to take us out of church or take us out of employment or anything like that. He did that, I believe, to take us into his 
nearer presence. For we would have the time to be sit and be still and to know indeed that he is God. Maybe during that time you have kept yourself busy. Perhaps busy to the extent that you haven't been enabled to draw closer to the Lord. But I would trust and pray that every one of us during the time that we've had like that will have done something more by way of praying, something more by way of reading and studying the word of God in an effort to know his presence in a fuller and, 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 and deeper way. But often it's difficult to wait for the Lord. Difficult to wait for his purpose to be revealed. Difficult to wait for him whenever we're trying to serve him. Or maybe even whenever we're going through trials. Whenever we're going through sufferings. But how important it is to wait. Be still. And know that I am God. And how we need to learn not to to rush ahead of the Lord. Psalm 40, I beg your pardon, Isaiah 40 verse 31 says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. It's a blessed thing to be able to wait upon the Lord. And I trust that you have been renewed to some extent over the months that are now behind us. But the question, we see that lovely thought, be still and know that I am God. But whenever we couple that in with what Jeremiah has said in the verse that we read from there, Jeremiah is asking the question, but why do we sit still? Why do we sit still? And the reason is simple, yet it's profound. It's because our God is worthy to be trusted in. We can wait upon him. We can wait for him. Because praise God, he is the one we've already intimated to it earlier. He's the one who knows the end from before the beginning. He's the one who is always on time. He is the one at times, although the answer doesn't seem to come perhaps at the time that we would desire it to come. He is the one, nevertheless, who is still in complete control. And we can wait upon him because he can be trusted in. He keeps in perfect peace, the scripture says, those whose minds are fixed on him, according to Isaiah chapter 26. And so we sit still, be still and know that I am God. But having said all of that, of course, there are other times when to sit still is the wrong thing to do. In fact, there are times when to sit still would be a shameful thing. And this is what Jeremiah has in mind. It was a time when action was needed amongst the people of God. Perhaps someone today who is still unsaved, listening to the sound of my voice today, wherever they might be, Still unsaved. Why do you still sit in your sin? Why would anyone still sit under the judgment of Almighty God upon sin? Whenever salvation is full and salvation is free and salvation has been purchased and provided for by our Lord Jesus Christ at the cross. And yet today all across our nation, all across the world, there are people who are still sitting in their sin in spite of the fact that a door, our Lord Jesus Christ, the door has opened heaven to the individual who will come and put their faith and their trust in him. When he has shed his precious blood to atone, to cleanse from sin, when through the work of the cross he can reconcile the, the, create, the, create, the creature unto the creator, he can reconcile the person to the living God through what he has done. And yet some still sit in their sin. I wonder, could that be anyone today who's listening to this? In Genesis chapter 19, verse 17, whenever the judgment of God was coming upon Sodom and Gomorrah, the cities of the plain, and you know the story, the angels come to lead Lot and his family 
out from there before the judgment would fall. And whenever they're leaving the city, the angels say to Lot, Escape for your life. Don't even stop in the plains. Go to the mountains. Because the judgment of God is about to fall. And friends, thank God today through the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, we can go, hallelujah, to that place of safety and that place of refuge instead of staying in the place of sin where judgment sooner or later will fall. Can I say to anyone today who is unseen, don't sit any longer in your lost condition. Run to Christ, glory to his holy name. Run to Christ without delay. We have a cross, we have forgiveness, we have love, we have salvation, we have reconciliation, all through our Savior and the cross of Calvary. But let me move on for a moment as I close, just to you and me. Because the question today we all need to ask ourselves is, am I sitting still? In my knowledge of the scriptures, am I sitting still? In my experience of prayer, am I sitting still? In my fellowship with God, am I sitting still? Am I, are we unmoved, unmoved in these days when the Lord has given us ample opportunity to spend time to be still in his presence and to hear from him? Are we sitting still whenever all around us people are perishing? Are we sitting still without a concern for the world, for the nation in which we live? Have we any real personal involvement in spreading the gospel message whereby God can save and draw the sinner unto himself? In Ephesians 5 verse 16, the apostle encourages us to redeem the time. You see, friends, as we move out, as we move forward, we're in the building today. And as we think about that step of progress, and for many it's a step of faith coming back in amongst other people. But as we take the next step in the journey that we are traveling together, as we take that next step, it is time for work. It is time for service. It is time to be active. I believe if lockdown has taught us anything, surely it has been that we have been involved in so many things, as I've said earlier, that are unimportant to the expense of those things that are most and vitally important. We've been taught to think about health. We've been taught to think about family. We have been taught to think about friends. And no doubt we have been taught to think much more about God. And folks, today, that's all in life that really matters. That's all that really matters. In the Old Testament, the children of Israel failed to enter the land, the land of fullness, the land of blessing. And they were excluded from those blessings for those 40 years that they wandered aimlessly in the wilderness. They chose to stay away from the fullness that God had provided for them in a land that was overflowing with blessing, overflowing with milk and honey. Can I encourage you today not to sit still, but can I encourage you today to press on in the things of God and to know that fullness in your life, not to be satisfied with anything that falls short of knowing God in a greater and in a deeper way. And together let's press on in these days of time and seek together and personally to enter more fully into the blessings of God's power and of God's presence. Jeremiah asked the question, and I'm finished, why do we sit still? Could I be speaking to someone today? Could I be speaking to us all today? Oh, yes, there are times, praise God, to be still and to know that he is God. But there are other times when we shouldn't sit still, but we should be seeking to press in with him more and more and more and more. Friends, let's move forward and let's go in and let's occupy everything 
everything that he has provided for us. Amen. Leave you with one little thought. There's a little story, you'll find it in the gospel. Jesus calls two people to come after him. And one person in that story says to him, okay, but first let me go and bury a loved one. The other one was called, and first of all he said, okay, but let me first go and say goodbye to my family. Read the story. The Bible says Jesus got into the boat and went to the other side. We never hear tell of those two individuals again. Let's make sure, beloved, that whatever he is doing, whatever he is about to do next, let's make sure that we don't miss the boat because of excuses that will hold us back from pressing more fully into him. Father, we thank you today for your thoughts, the thought of your word. We thank you for your hand upon us, Lord, the thought of your blessing, the thought of your goodness, the thought of your presence whenever we are still before you. We praise you. We thank you for all of that. But, Lord, we realize that the Christian life is not a, a standstill experience. Lord, we realize that we never come to the place where we have arrived. Lord, we realize that it's always a place where we press on because, Lord, we're either going forward or else we're going back. There's no standing still. Lord, may we be a people. May this church be an assembly. May we be a people individually in our own lives, a people, Lord, that are pressing on with you, a people who are in the boat, a people, Lord, who are experiencing you firsthand, and the blessing, Lord, being astounded by the things that you have made available and the things that you can do. Lord, may we be a people who will step forward with you into those things. And so bless everyone in this building today. Bless everyone in the car park outside and everyone who will be picking up on this on whatever social media platform. Father, cause your word to touch us deeply and give us the grace that we wouldn't just be hearers, but that we would be doers, because we ask it in Jesus' name, and we ask it for his greater glory. Amen. Amen. Praise God.